Thank you, Chief Leonard, and congratulations to all those added to our honor roll of life today. Now we'll begin a very special part of our program. I'd like to introduce a man who has been a key supporter of the honor roll of life since its inception 12 years ago, Howard P. Milstein, chairman of New York Blood Center's Board of Trustees. Now many people call him Howard, many people call him Mr. Milstein, and many people end up calling him Dr. Milstein. So he doesn't have an MD yet, but he's very close. Howard's leadership has been central to the growth and development and groundbreaking research of the New York Blood Center. Lines like that sometimes seem hollow, but this case is very unique and very true. Highly, intellectually, highly intellectual, highly driven, he believes that nothing can't be done, and he's always willing to help in any way he can. It's extremely phenomenal to work with a gentleman of this capacity and power. He's been instrumental in guiding the partnership with FDNY on this program and many other initiatives. As many of you know, Howard is a long-term supporter of FDNY and in fact, was made an honorary battalion chief in 2012. In every organization Mr. Milstein touches, he is building on a legacy of three generations of the Milstein family in philanthropic and civic causes. His family has long believed that they can help doctors help people and helping people is what it's all about. His family's support for healthcare institutions in New York is legendary. Support and leadership for such institutions as New York Presbyterian Hospital, Weill Cornell Medical Center, Rockefeller University, and the National Cancer Institute. In addition to being chairman of New York Blood Center, Howard is chairman of the American Skin Association, the Howard M. Jones Foundation for Reproductive Health, and the Milstein Medical Asian American Partnership Foundation, which brings together leading research and medical talent from institutions in the United States and institutions in Asia. He's also on the board of the United Hospital Fund and the Nicholas Children's Healthcare Foundation. He served on the board of Weill Cornell Medical College for more than 20 years. Howard is a true friend and supporter of both the New York Blood Center and FDMY, and I am especially pleased that he's leading the next portion of this program. Howard. Thank you, Chris. Well, I think we are going to spend some time on the really important people here today. Uh, before I begin, though, I also want to thank those on the podium with me here today, including Mary McLaughlin, Chief Leonard, and, of course, Commissioner Dan Nigro. Commissioner Nigro and everyone in the de Blasio administration, including the mayor, have been unwavering in their support of both this program and the New York Blood Center's life-saving mission. Mayor de Blasio is an honorary chair of our Volunteer Leadership Committee, and Commissioner Nigro, a member of, a member of our Leadership Committee. We're grateful for your support. I'd like to take a moment to honor the memory of former Fire Commissioner and Blood Center Trustee, my friend Nick Scapetta who passed away last month. Nick was a true American success story. His lifetime of public service will never be forgotten. His leadership of the FDNY in the wake of 9-11 was particularly admirable as he guided the department forward in the wake of the worst tragedy in our history. As fire commissioner and later as blood center trustee, Nick was instrumental in expanding the deep partnership between our organizations. Nick's leadership and example inspires the work of the New York Blood Center every day. The dedication of Nick Scapetta and his successors, Commissioners Cassano and Nigro, are impressive to be sure, but not surprising. Saving lives is what FDNY members do, and giving blood, becoming a part of the bone marrow registry, and stepping up when a donation is needed all of this is a natural extension of your mission. Your lives are dedicated to others, whether it's running into a burning building, responding to accidents, medical emergencies, or natural disasters, or giving of yourselves through programs like this one, so that others might live. The FDNY never fails to answer the call. And as Chris mentioned, saving lives is the mission of the New York Blood Center as well. Through all of our efforts in the fields of hematology, 
transfusion medicine, and cellular therapy. The NYBC is engaging in cutting edge research and creating innovative new blood products and especially new therapies to help people. In addition to our bone marrow registry, NYBC is also home to the first and largest public cord blood bank in the world. We're a world-class research and educational institution, as well as a local, regional, national, and global resource dedicated to saving lives every day. Our collaboration over the years has proven that the FDNY and the New York Blood Center are indeed a perfect match. So this morning, as we do each year, we're going to meet two bone marrow recipients and donors who made their recovery possible. One is our, of our recipients is three years cancer-free. The other has been cured of leukemia. These reunions are always an emotional reminder of why it is vital that people sign up for the bone marrow registry. If anyone is interested in registering or has questions regarding the donation process, there will be a New York Blood Center representative in the back of the room after the ceremony to assist you. Registering is as simple as a cheek swab, but as you will hear, it can make the most meaningful impact in someone's life. We'll now meet four incredible people brought together by fate and our program. At this time, I'd like to welcome John Lamont Ragland to join me on stage. Growing up in Nashville, Tennessee, Jonathan was very adventurous and loved sports. He had dreams of playing basketball in college, but in high school, Jonathan was diagnosed with essential thrombocytopenia, a rare chronic blood disorder characterized by an overproduction of blood platelets. Sometimes this can develop into acute myeloid leukemia. This news was compounded with the fact that Jonathan's father was also battling myelofibrosis a bone marrow cancer that prevents the body from making healthy blood cells. Jonathan's father passed away, and shortly thereafter, his own health took a downward turn. Jonathan himself was diagnosed with myelofibrosis, and he began chemotherapy in 2006. Thankfully, in 2013, he received a peripheral blood stem cell transplant from his match, firefighter Fred Perdue. Bronx native Fred Perdue actually joined our Be The Match registry in 1993 after he finished serving in the Marine Corps. Five years later, he joined the registry again while at the Fire Academy. He had been with the FDNY for 15 years when doctors matched him with Jonathan. Fred says he got a lot of encouragement to make his donation of peripheral stem blood cells from his fellow firefighters at Engine Company 67 in Washington Heights and every day feels honored, to have helped John, feels honored to have helped Jonathan and his family. At this time, please welcome firefighter donor Frederick Perdue to the stage to meet his recipient, Jonathan. Thank you. I'd now like to invite Amy Alcorn to the stage. Amy hails from Erie, Pennsylvania. More than six years ago, during a routine doctor's appointment, her doctor discovered abnormally low blood counts. After two painful bone marrow biopsies, Amy was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia, a type of blood cancer. She started chemotherapy while doctors searched for a stem cell transplant match. After an imperfect match with her sister fell through, the doctors found her perfect 10 out of 10 match in firefighter Michael Wilson. Mike Wilson of East Rockaway and Ladder Company 166 in Coney Island had always dreamed of becoming a New York City firefighter. He took the fire department test when he was 18 years old and graduated from the fire academy 13 years ago. It was at the academy where he signed up for our Be The Match program. Years later, when he received the call to be Amy's donor, Michael didn't hesitate. He saw the opportunity to save a woman's life, and he was the only one who could have done it. Both Amy and Michael have remarked 
how relatively simple the peripheral blood stem cell donation process was. What looked like a single bed of, bag of blood had the life-saving possibility to cure Amy's leukemia. Michael's humble donation did just that. At this time, I'd like to welcome firefighter Mike Wilson to the stage to meet his recipient, Amy. Thank you. Simply put, the FDNY bone marrow program saves lives. Today's stories are an emotional reminder of why we do what we do. I encourage anyone interested in signing up for the bone marrow registry to go to the table set up at the back of the room. I'd also like to remind the members of the media that the donors and recipients will be available for a press conference in the rear of the room. Thank you to the members of the honor roll of life and those on the registry. Thank you to Commissioner Nigro, uh, Chief Leonard, Captain Guerra, and Dr. Hillier, and Mary, <laughs> for your exemplary leadership and your efforts in helping to promote blood and bone marrow donations, and for saving people in need like Jonathan and Amy. And thank you for coming today. <laughs>